You know, there was a guy named William Burroughs, and uh, he was down in Mexico City, and he was in a bar. He was drunk. I think he was on heroin, too, maybe uh, something else. And he said, oh, everybody, have you seen my William Tell act? I think he said, our William Tell act. He'd never done this before. So his, his girlfriend, his live-in girlfriend, takes uh, some kind of uh, highball glass, <clears throat> puts it on top of her head, he pulls out his revolver, and unfortunately, he shoots her right in the face, dead on the spot. Jesus. And, you know, at that time, it was called the Beat Generation. There was a guy named Allen Ginsberg, another guy named Jack Kerouac, and this guy and some others. Anything goes. Life is a game. There's no authoritative prescription from on high. Whatever you want to do, if you want to live, live, have a live-in girlfriend, if you want a tattoo, if you want drugs, everything was on the table. Religion, transgender, uh, I, I'm talking about uh, actually gender, religion, gender, God, it's all on the table. If, if Eve wants to, to, to trans to Adam, well, you know, if, if God was a surgeon to bring Eve out of, Adam, uh, out of Adam's side, uh, then uh, maybe a transgender uh, uh, surgeon can, can use the uh, hormone therapy and the, and the knife to, to trans Eve into Adam. Whatever, whatever you want to do, man, everything's on the table. Even your gender is on the table, you know? Well, that, that was the beat generation, and... When this event happened with the highball glass and the revolver, there, was, there were two little kids on a bicycle doing the same thing. It was a daredevil act like William Burroughs did with his wife. All you got to do is put your little brother on the back of the bicycle and race down Madison Avenue. Now, every morning as a little 10-year-old kid, I'm watching him struggle to get up the hill with his little brother on the back of the bicycle. But that's in the morning before school when I'm sitting on the couch looking out the bay window, supposed to be doing my reading and my homework. I'm watching this kid and his little brother on the bicycle. But after school, and I think school got out exactly at 4.15, there was this daredevil race, this game, like William Burroughs with the highball class and the revolver. And what was the race? The race was to beat the train. And you see, you had to go down Madison Avenue, you had to cross Washington Street, you had to cross Columbia Street, you had to cross uh, the, the railroad tracks before the train came, which came exactly at 421 every day, and make it to Oak Street. And if you could, Oh, what, what a thrill, what an adrenaline rush. And so the idea that there's a little strip of railroad, if you are in that little zone at 421 sharp, you are going to be decapitated, dismembered, and your guts and your blood are going to be all over the street. That idea is nowhere in the picture because life is a game. It's all subjective. There's no absolutes. It's whatever you feel, whatever you want. Nothing bad could really happen. It's all about you and what your druthers are, what you see. Well, I have a scripture here. It says that when God sees the blood, it's about what God sees. When God sees the blood, he will pass over you. And that destroyer, that, that mashkit destroyer there in, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 23, he will not be permitted, it says in the Hebrew, he will not be permitted to go into your house, to come into your house, to strike and to kill. And that's what God says. 
but it's not just any blood. Yohanan the Hamakbil says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's his blood. And then in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, it says, Like a lamb, the Messiah will go to the slaughter. Like a lamb, like a Pesach lamb on Pesach. His blood. He said, This is the Brit Hahadashah in my blood which is poured out for many. Hallelujah. So here we have the way that you can be part of the chosen people. Now in Yiddish, Oysterwelt folk is the way you say chosen people. Salvation is of the Jews. You have to be grafted in to the Jewish people. And even if you were born a Jew, God still has to see that blood. When he sees that blood, he will skip, he will spare, he will pass over, he will pasak, he, he will uh, save you from the mashkit who is coming like a, like a freight train headed for that crossing. And your, your soul depends on what is there at that threshold. Now, when the train gets to the threshold of Madison Avenue and crosses that little 15-foot uh, area there, maybe 20-feet area, there's only a, a little railroad crossing sign. That's all there is. So when that Mashkit train comes to that threshold, it's all important that you listen to the prescription. Now, this little boy said, look, I know I'm supposed to take care of my little brother, but look, we're having fun, so I'll put him on the back of the bike, and, and, and we'll, we'll get down the, the street in time, and we'll miss that train, because I'm pretty fast, and this is about the most exciting thing in the world. And my brother, he gets real scared, but he also laughs. He thinks it's fun, too. I know what my dad told me, and I know about being warned about, you know, bicycle safety and all that, but that's not what I'm into right now. I'm into what I want. Listen, friend, the Bible says it's not about what, what you want. It's about what God wants and what God sees. Does he see the blood? If he sees the blood at the threshold of your house, if he sees the blood of the lamb, of, of, of the, the Mashiach lamb, the great lamb, the lamb of Isaiah 53, 7, the lamb that Yohanan Hamadbil said, Behold, he named Haish, the lamb of God who takes away. Listen, there's something that has to be taken away. When you, when you open the Bible to Romans, you get to the 18th verse of the first chapter and it speaks about the orgi theu, the anger of God, the wrath of God. It's revealed from heaven. And that has to be taken away. And if it is taken away, then you miss the train. The train and you do not collide. There is no dismemberment and decapitation of arms and limbs, guts and blood all over the street. When my mother ran into the house, she was white as a sheet and until she saw that I was alive and I was sitting there in the house and it wasn't me because she had been told that somebody with a bicycle, and I, I had a bicycle, was racing down Madison Avenue and I was always racing down Madison Avenue, who was hit by a train and they couldn't even, there were two heads, so they saw there were two people that were killed and there were four or five, uh, maybe, I guess there was four or five limbs that they could make out, you know, arms, hands, uh, legs, blood and guts all over the street. Listen, friend, the most important blood is the blood of the lamb. That blood, which is shed for many, that, that shedding of blood, with, which Mashiach came to do on Pesach to fulfill Isaiah 53, 7, to fulfill Exodus chapter 12, 
to save you from the, from the terrible destroyer, the Mashkit, the destroyer who otherwise would have permission to enter your house and strike you. That Mashkit train struck those two boys. And it, it, could have been, it could have been avoided. It could have been avoided. And what's going to happen with you could, could be avoided. If only God could see the blood in your heart, on, your, on the lintel and doorpost, on the mezuzahs, the, the, the mezuzahs of your heart. If only God could see that blood that you that you believed that text in Romans 5, having been justified freely by his blood. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 3, that blood propitiates the wrath of God. Yes, that blood is what calms down the wrath of God, which is like a volcano erupting. You don't want it, friend. You don't want the wrath of God to fall upon you. And if you think, well, you know, there's another way. There might have been Jews that night doing good deeds. There might have been uh, Jewish people uh, outside their houses uh, helping little old ladies across the street or whatever. I don't know. But it didn't save them if they were not in the house and under the, the seal and sign of the blood. It will be a sign. The blood is your admission to heaven, friend. It is your, your, uh, your, your protection from the mashit, from the destroyer. It, it, is, it, is, it is your salvation, the blood of Mashiach. Hallelujah. When I see the blood, not when you see it, when God sees it. When God sees that you are trusting in his blood and only his blood to save you, then the destruction will skip you and be, you'll be spared from it. And Lord, I want to pray today. I want to pray, Lord, that people all over the world will understand that salvation is of the Jews and that if you want to be grafted into the people, of God who are saved, the Bahirim, the, the elect, you must have God looking at the blood of his lamb, the Zutfunder Eibister, his lamb, and that blood you must trust because it justifies you and makes you innocent and protects you from God's judgment because God is just and he must judge evil, but he's merciful and wants to deliver people. And so he has provided a way. And I thank you for that way today, Lord. I thank you that, yes, the blood on those three places, the top post and the two side posts of, of the door jam. If the blood is there and you see it, if the blood is the blood of the Lamb, the Mashiach, and you see it, and it's there, and we put it there by faith, hallelujah, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will ask me to come in, I will come in. I will put my blood on the, on the three places of their heart, on the, the door of their heart, and they, the, the, the destroyer will not be permitted to come near them for they will in no wise be cast out and will give you the praise. Amen.